Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have a Dingle Founding Fathers 8 Up. Now this is cast number 210. This is whiskey base number 131037. This was produced or distilled in 2013, bottled 2019 in a sherry cask at 58.3%. Why 8 Up? Well, there were eight friends that actually got together and wanted to buy a cask there, and they actually decided to do that. They followed their dreams, and now they actually have the result, this bottle in front of them. Now, I bought this bottle on auction. This was 230, 239 euros is what I paid for this. Fairly expensive, yes, I know. But I wanted to be part of this beginning of this Founding Fathers. I wanted to have a little bit of a video about as many Founding Father bottles as possible. Um, I've actually done reviews about the Mr. Whiskey, MR Whiskey. I've done a review about the Old Cannon, which was in a um, bourbon cask, which I think was an excellent, excellent whiskey. I'm going to compare it to the, the Palace Choice here from Dublin, which was cask number 72, also in a sherry cask with um, 58.6. This is 58.3. I'm going to compare the two of them, and for me, the pinnacle of the um, Founders Cast, uh, Founding Father Cast series so far has been the Austria edition from Brianna's Choice. This is actually the best Founding Fathers I've ever had. Very, very, very well done. So, to compare the two, I need just to add a little bit. Now, Sherry Cast can be nice, and a Sherry Cast can be a little bit brutal. To be very honest, imagine I would have had the opportunities with a couple friends back in 2013 to, to buy a Founding Father cask by Dingle. What would I have chosen? We had the port wood, we had the sherry wood, and we had the bourbon wood. Now, a friend of mine, the Mr. Whiskey, I actually personally know, um, uh, the Michael um, Rein Reinicke, um, he actually bought two casks. Well, his wife, wife bought one and he bought one, so one per person. But they, as a couple, actually had one. He kept his bourbon cask. He sent back the sherry cask and said, I'm sorry. No, not good. And um, I would have probably gone for the sherry cask as well. I like sherry bombs. Imagine you had here a, a, a new distillery. Would you have been <sighs> courageous enough to say, oh, let's just do a bourbon cask? No. Would you have gone for port? It's like, well, Irish and port, well... The Turconel um, is okay, but other than that, there's not much port out there, and we have a Clonakilty with a port, but other than that, mm, let's go for sherry. Sherry's always good. Go for sherry. And that's what they did. And so they left him in the sherry cask for about six years, and now we have the result. And my nose says, let's think. My nose says here I have phosphor. Um, so I always want to say phosphor, sulfur. I have sulfur. <laughs> sulfur and brimstone no 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 it's just sulfur all right so i have sulfur which is like the max match uh, the, the match um the, the um yeah from camping matches and so on and um it's not i'm not someone who's very very oversensitive to this to the sulfur but this is something where i just kind of go ooh. I know um, from No Nonsense Whiskey, Vin is very, very, very oversensitive with the with the phosphor, uh, with the sulfur, and I'm not that sensitive. But this is just a little bit too much for me, to be honest. Um, the Palace Bar is actually much sweeter, much more um, appealing to me, and I did not like this whiskey. <laughs> so it just shows a little bit of the levels here. Um, some of us like that. Sulfur, those dirty type of whiskeys, um, especially when it goes in the, in the Highland Scot Scotch and the Island Scotch, and maybe that's what these friends actually wanted here. Oliver Hughes, the founder of Dingle, has passed away, but he actually had that founders program. It's a very, very interesting thing. I wish I would have been in whiskey way back when. At the moment, I'm thinking about getting a couple German friends together, maybe five to eight friends, and we're going to go buy some casks around Europe and see what happens with those in the next three to ten years and let them just mature and just enjoy maybe the fruits of our entrepreneurship, of our venture capital out there in that world. Imagine having your own your label and your own whiskey. That'd be kind of cool, right? 
I don't know what I'm going to do with 305 bottles, even if I divide it up by maybe even 10 people, that's 30 bottles per person. But we'll, we'll manage, we'll figure out a way to get this out of the people, I'm sure. All right, so Salon Java, 58.3%. Mm. This is literally my one, two, three, four, my fifth glass of cast strength whiskey tonight. And this is the hottest and the worst of them all. <laughs> um, wow. That sulfurous, sulfuric, um, note is just overpowering much of everything else that's going on. I'm not getting any of the distillery character. I've mentioned this before. If you take um, a sherry cask, maybe in this case, a second fill sherry cask, I have the feeling this is a first fill. I have a feeling this is a second fill sherry cask and you let it just sit for six years. And then that sherry even takes over a little bit. Um, I was, um, I had a conversation with George Grant the um, vice president of Glen Farkless, and he said, oh, first fill sherry casks, no thank you. Four years, get rid of them and use them as second fill carry sherry cask. Put them in there for the family cask for maybe 18 years, use them again, use them a third time, and then you can use them for the 105 or whatever. Um, but no, first fill is just too, exp too, too much, too much. It's just way too much. It's, just, it's just too much seasoning, too much, too much going on in there. And exactly that's what I'm getting here. Um, a little bit too much. I'm getting too much of the the, of the artificial sherry moment over here. But I'm getting too much of the sulfur moment over there. Mm. I'm not a particular great fan of the profile of that whiskey over here. But the alcohol burn, the, uh, the alcohol note is so much smoother so much more built into the entire whiskey than over here towards the end there's a tiny little bit of a supporting moment with the alcohol here from the very beginning it's like burn your tongue off and that's such a shame because this for example the brianna's choice is just such a lovely whiskey i put it up there with my red breast 21 i put it up there with my the irishman 17 single cast sherry ca sherry cask um this is just such a nice excellent fantastic whiskey and it's what it's amazing especially with sport store picks and so on with these 500 different barrels that are out there in the world how many different directions they can go now there will not be 500 releases of the founding fathers many of them actually were um the distillery bought them back um they gave them maybe their 10 percent interest or whatever and they didn't actually bottle them um, many of the people did say hey we want our bottles we want to sell them for hundreds and hundreds of euros and give them to friends and have christmas presents and so on that's the original meaning and the original plan and i like that but i must admit the eight up just doesn't fit into my wheelhouse it just doesn't tickle my boxes tick my boxes at all all right we're gonna put a little bit of water in here it is after all 58.3 percent sulfur comes in a little bit more the sherry's still there not much wood a little bit of alcohol a little bit of a burnt green tea I don't know. I imagine you had some, you're making iced tea or whatever, and you have to heat it up, and you had some green tea, and it was a little bit of like burnt green tea. Never had that before, but that's what I'm getting. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Just doesn't do it for me. Not at all. Going to give it a uh, C minus minus value for money of D minus minus. I don't imagine. I actually, I, I regret adding the extra 20 euros to my um, bid to get this. I really do. Um, let's see what happens if someone actually gets some samples or I'm stuck with this bottle for the rest of my life. After opening it, um, the value has gone down. Um, online, they are going for like 400 euros at the moment. This is amazing. This is the highest price in Ingle at the moment I can find out there. And I got it for a fairly cheap price, but if it doesn't taste good, mm, 
I would be willing to trade this in a day for a, even a half of a barrel or half of a, um, a bottle for the Brianna's Choice. That's so good. Even over here, the um, the old Canon is so much better. Um, let's try this one last time. And then we'll end the video for the day. So this is the this is the picture I just love to give at the moment. All four founding fathers. I wish I had the Mr. Whiskey here to hold up and actually share with you as well. So much better. This is 59.8%. So if you actually open another three ABV. Hmm. Hmm. Mmm. Distillery ca character. Hawaiian punch. Mmm. Oh, the, the, the bourbon just doesn't take over and just change everything and and represses everything. A little bit too much alcohol for my for my tasting. A little bit of water added to that. Bring it down to like 50%. Beautiful. Beautiful. Take this down to 50%. You still have the sulfur. You take it down to 40%. You still have the sulfur. You bring it down to 30%. It's, it still remains a little bit creamy. The, the, the basic spirit of this is fabulous, but that sulfur is still there in the background, and it's just not worth it. All right, so Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany. My question of the day is, what other new distilleries do you know in Germany that have opened up and have started producing whiskey? So we have Teeling. We have West Cork. We have Dingle. There are 30 other distilleries out there actually at the moment producing whiskey. What are they? Thank you very much for watching. All the best. Like, subscribe, and tell others. Bye-bye.